Let's say it. Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! Hosanna! Hosanna, spring has come! <laughs> Hosanna on this wonderful morning! Hosanna! Hosanna. Gotta get our use out of these poems. <laughs> May mercy, grace, and peace be yours in abundance, through God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. About a month ago, Jim and I had need of a rental moving truck to bring back some home furnishings uh, from the farm in Missouri. I think we found the last business with the truck to rent that day. We got there right at a 10 a.m. opening time, hoping we'd be ready to go in a jiffy. And then the paperwork began. First, the basic questions of how many days, who's driving, where are you going, uh, how many miles, show your insurance, show your license. Then there was a separate 10-page booklet on how 20 different insurance companies philosophically treat the question of whether you should buy extra insurance. <laughs> there was a list of every possible customer infraction. It had a fee. $30 for the, was the charge if you didn't return the truck all swept. So if it was unswept, 30 bucks. $285 if you um, broke off the side mirror. <laughs> Finally, we got to tour the truck and we were renting. We made uh, a list of all the old dents and scratches um, so we wouldn't get charged for those. Um, um, just any new dents and scratches that we <laughs> happened to incur. It took about an hour and a half, and um, I don't think that Jim uh, would have gotten the keys to the truck if he just said, the Lord has need of it. <laughs> it seems like things went more smoothly for the two disciples that Jesus sent to borrow that donkey for his ride to Jerusalem. We heard Matthew's version from the children today. Luke and Mark's versions are keen to tell us just how Jesus got that donkey. So I'm using a mashup today. I'm using all three synoptic gospels. So uh, together, here's uh, the telling of the donkey part of the story. Jesus sent two disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you'll find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. And we'll, retu and we'll return it immediately. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They answered as Jesus had told them. And then they brought the donkey to Jesus. Imagine, if you will, how the owner of the Rent-A-Donkey franchise saw this. You know the one at the intersection of uh, Bethpage Avenue and Mount of Olives Boulevard? That one? There you go. Something like that, you know. I understand Jesus needs it. But, yeah, bring it back with a full stomach. Rental applications would have been sparse in those days. Who's renting this? The Lord. Reason? The Lord has need of it. Owner writes down undisclosed reason. <laughs> How many miles in destination? Jerusalem and back. Three miles round trip. Return by within 24 hours. We might wonder why the owner agreed without even a deposit. <laughs> Obviously, the Lord has need of it, carried weight. Speaking of weight, in that day, Roman soldiers could commandeer any citizen to carry their 75-pound battle pack for a couple miles. Kings were used to commandeering people, too, and things, whatever they liked. King Ahab uh, saw a nice vineyard, and he wanted it, and he actually tried to buy it from the owner who wouldn't sell. Mm -mm. So... His wife had the owner murdered, and he got the vineyard. When you wield power, you just take what you want. But Jesus was a new kind of Lord. 
He sent his disciples with the message, the Lord needs it, and will send it back immediately. In other words, even though I have the right to commandeer this donkey, I will return it to you. There's something else that doesn't quite jive here. How can the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, need something, anything? Let me listen to a few verses from Psalm 50. For every wild animal of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the air and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you, for the world and all that is in it is mine. And here we have Jesus, God's son, who arrives without a bride, having so humbled himself, so emptied himself. He's walked everywhere in order to be with and among the people. He could have walked to Jerusalem. So why did he need to ride a donkey? Well, the answer is that now, is the time to declare his kingship and his kingdom. This was a day the Jewish people had been praying for a long, long time. They lived under the boot of Rome. They looked back to the prophet Zechariah, who had said that a deliverer would stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, and that he would then ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. Jesus the long-awaited king, come to set his people free. Other ancient memories would be evoked. We think of a donkey as a beast of burden, a farm animal. But in ancient days, it was royal transportation. In 1 Kings, King David gave instructions for his son Solomon to ride on his mule as part of the transferring of power to him. He said, and let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him at Gihon as king over Israel and blow the trumpet and say, long live King Solomon, riding this colt into Jerusalem. The donkey represented a peaceful transfer of power. A donkey never ridden before signaled one worthy of a king. A used model wouldn't do. Everybody got the message. That's why they were so excited. God had finally sent a king to deliver them. They took off their cloaks and they laid them on the road so that the very hoofs of the donkey carrying the new king wouldn't have to touch dirt. It's the red carpet treatment for Jesus and the donkey too. But the Romans also clearly got the message. Five days later, they crucified Jesus and put the charge against him on a piece of wood above his head that read, King of the Jews. Let's go back to that donkey rental agreement. Since we know what's going to happen this Holy Week, we can fill in more details on that application. I always want to know who's the driver. Jesus, the Son of God, Messiah, Savior, Lord of all, King, meek and humble, who will redefine what it means to be a person of power. Where? To Jerusalem. Where the religious leaders of the temple plot against him. The power of Rome waits to crush him. Judas will betray him. His closest friends desert him. And Satan, king of evil, awaits him. Purpose to redeem us, to take the punishment for our sin, 
to deliver us from evil, to turn the world over through love. Distance to the finish, to the cross on a hill called Golgotha, in perfect and full obedience to accomplish his mission. The Palm Sunday crowd had their own ideas of what Jesus should do next. In fact, they don't actually even call him a king. They hail him as son of David, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. But they didn't put him in the right place. The king of kings. <laughs> and we're guilty too. We have our own ideas of what Jesus should do for us. We treat the life that God has loaned us as if we could write our own rental agreement. When I'm ready, I'll bring my life back to you in whatever condition after I use it up. I'll roll into your lot from the top of the hill on an empty tank. Tire treads worn off. I'll turn myself in on the last day with a, I'm sorry for the things I should have done and didn't. Your life is not a rental agreement that you write to suit yourself. God and your neighbor are counting on you and everything that you do matters. Don't waste it. Don't do that. Because the Lord has need of it. The Lord has need of you. The Lord has need of your life. The good news is that when you and I release our lives and whatever we have to him, he will return it. You give him your worship, and he will return it to you with joy. You give him your obedience, and he'll return it to you with a righteous peace in the Holy Spirit. You give him anything, and he says, I will multiply this 30, 60, and 100 fold as much in this life and in the life to come eternal life. God who holds your life will be faithful to you. And to prove it, God's son died so that you would live. Come and see. Come and follow him this week.